Thanks a lot. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Um, my name is Joe Costello. I'm the art director here at uh, Great Dane Graphics. And we're going to be going over how to use digital artwork in Corel Draw. So firstly, I'm going to give you an overview about what we do at Great Dane, how the artwork exactly works, the file types. Then we're going to get into working on the design in Corel Draw. I'm going to show you some tricks and things on how to enhance your artwork, what level to take it to for digital printing and things like that. Now, I will preface this beginning. This is for digital artwork. So with digital artwork here at Great Dane, we usually use Photoshop. It's nothing against CorelDRAW. It's just we're more of a, it's a right tool, right job situation. But if you want to stay in CorelDRAW, that's fine. And I'm going to show you some things today that uh, will get you through it. So firstly, at Great Dane here, we are a subscription-based uh, art company. We offer artwork, various categories, you know, sports and mascots and to Scholastics and whatever. So we uh, we offer our artwork in multiple file types for different types of printing method. I know we're discussing digital today, but we do offer it in you know for print cutting, screen printing, vinyl cutting, everything. We add new artwork every week. Second. And as you can see on Tuesdays actually, so these are actually the new ones for this week. So with our artwork, uh, let's just we can go ahead and click on one. And as I mentioned, these are the multiple types that we offer. Uh, the digital one, again, is the one we're going to be focusing on, but, you know, we have a print cutting one. Screen print gives you, uh, let me get the details out here. The screen print one, it is pre-separated for screen printing, gives you all the spot colors you can import into Corel Draw, place an illustrator, add type, print the seps. Uh, right here, this one gives us, tells us this is a five on a white, five on a black, six colors on a colored shirt. Uh, then we've got, oh, there's the X. Then we've got our laser. This would be like for your Oki laser inkjet printing. Uh, this would be your typical vector version. Then we've got your vinyl cut detail, a vinyl cut basic. Uh, so let's go back to the digital. Now before we get into Corel Draw real quick, one feature that we did want to point out on our site is that we do actually have a customizer. So if we've all had that issue where it's like our clients were just not quite understanding what it is they want, and it's something that you can use and have them design it right here. So I'll just show you how this works real quick, and we'll actually bring this into Corel Draw. Um, so what you can do is you can add your type. Well, actually, let's resize them, make some room. All right, let's bring over here. Uh, we'll just do turkey. Type comes up. We got multiple stalls, fonts loaded in here. You know, if you don't want to, all the way from athletic to collegiate type to you know grunge. Yeah, that works for Turkey. Shrink a little bit. You can add. You can do solid color. You can just do it blue. You can add gradients to it. You can even mess with some textures. Not a whole lot, but uh, we're gonna add just a quick gradient in here. So let's go from. Orange to black. Maybe make that a dark brown. Yeah. You can also come back here. You can also we in here. You can arc it and things like that. So we'll just give it a quick arc. Lower it. Add a quick outline. Yeah. Just the size of it. And we'll go ahead and move it behind the turkey. Yeah. And then once you're done with your design, you just click the download button. You can download as a PDF or a PNG. I typically do PNG, and if you were digitally printing this, just go with the PNG. Give it a second here. Now, I'm using Internet Explorer, and the, it would, the reason I'm mentioning this is if you're using different type of Internet provider like uh, Safari or Firefox, they all kind of download differently. And we are on a PC today, so what Internet Explorer likes to do when you download something is it likes to ask you if you want to save, save as, or not do it. I always go to save as because I like to pay attention to where it's dumping my files. This one says it's going to my desktop, which is, that's where I'd like it to go. Now, some other, I think Firefox is the one, it will automatically go to your downloads folder. So, and it won't, I don't even think it really even asks you, it just dumps it there. So it's just something to pay attention to because we do have people all the time, you know, so like, hey, I downloaded a file, I cannot find it. These are typically, these are the basic uh, default functions for internet downloading. So I'm going to save mine to my desktop. 
I can name whatever I want. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Since it really isn't any files on my desktop, close this, close this, and oh yeah. And one quick thing I did want to mention, since you guys are taking a class today, we do have a special offer. Uh, if we are giving away one free month of our membership, so basically we're handing over 200 pieces of artwork on us. Uh, this is a code. If you'd like to sign up to do that, it's 857 SMS TVC. Uh, I'll show this again at the end, but uh, I just wanted to show it real quick in case you guys wanted to write it down. So you get a free month on our site, download new artwork, checking out the new stuff, and seeing how it works for you. Go ahead and close that. All right. So our turkey downloaded our desktop. I'm going to open this in Corel uh, Photo Paint. We are going to be primarily working in Corel Draw today. The main reason is Corel now, it's, I have the updated version. It is Corel 8 or X8. And the reason we're going to be mainly doing Corel Draw is as Corel has been upgrading, they've actually been adding more and more features to handle raster or bitmap artwork in Corel Draw. So, and a lot of the things that you can do in Corel Draw or in Corel Photo Paint, you can also do in Corel Draw. So we're going to primarily hang out there because also too a lot of people aren't really even all that familiar with Photo Paint. It's uh, it's just their add-on with their suite. But the reason we're going to open this in Photo Paint is because I want to get I'm going to show you more about what is raster artwork. That is one of the biggest questions. Is it vector? Well, wait. If it's not vector, then how do I blow it up? You know, how can I increase size or shrink it down? Is it going to lose information? The answer to that is yes and no, and I want to show you why. So. We're going to go ahead and go file, open. Let's go to our desktop, which I guess we are. Oh, yeah, downloaded design. And there's our turkey. So raster artwork, the key to raster artwork is this. Unlike vector artwork, which is made up of nodes, tiny little dots connecting, um, raster artwork is made of pixels. So it's tiny little square colors. So let's I'll zoom up super close. Yeah, we're going to come closer. As you can see, it's this tiny, 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 tiny little squares of color. And when they sit next to each other, then and you zoom back out, it forms a more detailed image. So pretty much photographs, paintings, all that stuff is going to be raster artwork. And it looks nicer. You can get more detail using raster artwork. So the main thing with raster artwork that a lot of people misconception is, hey, well, I can't blow that up. I do billboards. You know, it's not a high enough DPI. DPI is dots per inch. It's how many of those squares per square inch in the image. So if it's low DPI, like I'm sure all you guys have had the customers, they come in with the image, they pulled off a Google search, and they're like, hey, I want this on a shirt, add my school name. And you're looking at going, ugh. What? and it's two inches by two inches at 72 DPI. You blow it up, it looks like a mess. You'd have to pay somebody to recreate it and whatnot. With sizing raster artwork, it is, more, it is about the DPI. It's about quality. So the higher the DPI, the bigger you can get it. Here at Great Dane, all of our artwork, our digital stuff, we are at 14 inches by 14 inches at 300 DPI. So we have got clients who use them on billboards. We've even got a guy who dye sublimates like, temporary like know, floor, like he'll put on a school gym for the prom or something like that and super big. So with raster artwork, the higher the DPI, the better. So you can blow it up, shrink it down, you're not going to lose quality. So all right, well, we're not going to be working with a turkey all day today. Let's do something a little more interesting. Let's go back to the site real quick. And all right, we are in football season, so let's go with football. So we'll just do a quick search on our site. Give it a second here. Okay, thank you. All right, so when you search on our site and you just type football, it immediately will show you, as I mentioned, all our different versions. Well, I don't want to search through all our different versions. I just want to see digital images. So I'm just going to click digital printing, let it cycle through. And now I'm just looking at the digital version of the images, so it's a bit more condensed for my search. So let's, we're, gonna, we're actually going to grab two images. Let's start with this one. This one is the one I want to make a layout with. So let's load it up. All right. So again, I got the multiple versions here. 
Uh, again, we're digital printing, so we're just going to click the download button. Click download. Save as. Let's go. We're already on our desktop. Just click save. Close this. And actually, I'm going to get one more image because I'm. There's another feature with raster at work on how versatile it can be that I want to show you. So let's. Want something with color. Yeah, I like this football. Let's use him. And we'll download the digital one. Click download. So that's and go to the desktop save. All right, those probably should have been downloaded already. Okay. First things first with our files. When our files download, I, I do apologize if some of you know that this is, that you know what a zip file is and how it works, but I am going to cover this because we get asked this a lot. So people get confused, not knowing what it is and how to use it, how to open it properly. So I'd like to cover that. So our files download with zip files. What a zip file is is you need to think of it like a suitcase when you're going on a trip. You don't just grab your clothes, hop on the plane, and hold them in your hand. You're going to lose stuff. It's going to fall out. Whatever. Same thing, we have to treat files like that on the internet. So to protect the file, so we can condense the size, so it's quicker to download, to protect it from getting corrupted and transfer, we zip them. So we, they are, we zip them up into a folder. You'll see a little icon, gives you a little zip icon here. So on PCs, there, you'd be surprised what people do call and they're still using older versions of Windows. So I will mention how to unzip there. If you're a current version of Windows, or you're even up to close to Windows 7, all you need to do to open a zip file is just double click it. And it opens right up. Now, I tell people you need to drag the file and drop it onto your desktop. And then you can close it and you can actually go ahead and dump the zip file. Now, if you have an older version of Windows, you have a couple options. I mean, I've had people call up who are going all the way back to this day even. So, so you uh, typically I don't know what versions this is, but Previous ones, well, all you needed to do is click right click on it, and there was an extract all button. Uh, there, we still have it here. So you can just do extract all, and it'll take it out. Uh, otherwise, you'll have to find, if you've got even a super older version of Windows, you're going to have to find a zip file. Like I think one is called like WinZip or JZip, and uh, go from there. So let's just unzip this, and we'll pull this file out. Okay. All right, we can go ahead and trash that. So before we start with the layout, the first thing I actually would like to cover is opening these files in Illustrator, and then we're going to show you how to change colors, because that's typically the first thing you're going to want to do, especially if you deal with a lot of schools. They don't, um, you need to change it to their school colors, obviously. All right, these are raster files. They are PNGs. When using Corel Draw, you can't just open them. Corel's not going to be able to read it. So what you need to do is you need to start by creating a new document. File new. My default size is usually 14 by 14. It's a typical t-shirt size, so I just leave it there. Click OK. So with my document here, what you're going to want to do is you're going to import the file in. So you go File, Import, and select your file wherever you leave them. Like mine are on my desktop here, so click Import. Now you can just left click and drop it in size, or you can size it in, just click and drag. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one. Not bad. One second. We'll cut them. All right, click, cut. File, import. There we go. All right. So here's our image. Let's say your team color is green. There, I'm going to show you actually two different ways in Corel Draw how to change colors for raster artwork. Um, let me get my object manager up. I typically like to have my object manager up um, just so I can see, like, if I'm adding type and things, you know, I can move them up and down. I can grab them quicker this way because I, I, I grew up in Illustrator. Usually, you could just click and drag, and whatever that drag area was touching, it would grab. Corel, you got to like literally drag it over the whole thing, which I find can sometimes be 
or panes. So I prefer to have my object manager up. So if I need to grab something, I just come over here and click it. So, all right. So with it selected, we're going to go to Effects, Adjust. And again, as I mentioned, there's two ways. One, I'm going to show you, we're going to use a hue saturation lightness, and then we're going to use replace colors. I personally like to use replace colors uh, more other than hue saturation lightness, but again, I'd like to show you both methods. So with hue saturation lightness, now it automatically previews now in, in the current version of Corel um, X8. So on older versions of Corel, I don't even think in, F, in X7 it would it would automatically preview when you move sliders and stuff. Like you know, you do it like this, and it boom, it automatically will show you. Older versions, it does not. You'd have to move the slider, hit preview, give it a second, and just yes. So let's uh, reset. So in the hue saturation window, you've got your colors selected up here at the top. So I just want to change the red. So I would click red, move the slider, keep moving the slider until I find what I want. Now, as you can see, I can't go any further. So my whole range right now is from basically you know, from red to orange to yellow. I need green. This is why I'm not the biggest fan of the hue saturation lightness slider in Corel. Um, I just I'd have to click OK, reopen the window, click yellow, and then move it again, and keep doing that until I found the color I wanted. So the hue is the color. It changes the color. And I mean, if, even if you go the other way, it's, it'll go only so far. It'll go like the next color over on the color wheel. So with the hue, um, sorry, with the hue, it is, it, you're basically using that to select your color. Saturation is how bright you want that color. So, you know, if you want it dull, you pull it back. If you want it a really hot red, you push it forward. The lightness slider, which they even have this feature in Photoshop, I barely ever use. And the reason for that is, is yeah, let's say I want this red to be darker. Well, it darkens about most everything. So I'm, I typically don't use it. If I need to use something like that, I'll use a contrast brightness kind of thing. So let's reset this. So that's how the hue saturation slider works. And uh, let's use the one I really like. Under effects, go to adjust, replace color. This is a nice feature in Corel. Now, it automatically selected the blue. That's not what I want. So I want to change the red. So I click my eyedropper tool. I'll come over here and, well, yeah, come over here and I'll find, you don't want the darkest red like in here. You, you don't want the lightest red like over here. You want to find that mid-range red like that. And it'll, and it'll just change that. Well, it sets it to this color, but let's... Now here's two. You can go to swatches if you'd like to use, if you have certain swatches you'd like to use. Um, I'm just going to use the, uh, the map tool or color wheel here. Let's go to green. Eh, darker. And you see it changes instantly. This was not the case in previous version of Corel. They really upped their game on this one. i got to give them credit for that. Um, and then I like where that green's at. So we'll close the window, click OK, and let's go back real quick. I'm going to change that blue. I don't know why I closed the window then, but I did. So again, we pick like a medium range blue. And let's make this a yellow. There you go. Close that window. We'll click OK. And that's how you change color in Corel Draw. It's really easy to do. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's not much else to it. So, all right, let's get to our design then and dress up some type. So, I'm going to just close this and start fresh. All right, so we've got our football. Okay, doesn't work. Give it a second here. All right, so again, we're using a PNG. we got to start with a new document, so we'll start new, 14 by 14, got it. Click OK. And before I import the image in, actually, this is going on a black T-shirt. So firstly, I'd like to see what it looks like when I'm working on a black T-shirt. So first, I'm going to put down a square rectangle here. Get the size of the canvas. 
check the outlines there, fill it with black. And there we go. Um, I'm actually going to lock it down and generate a new layer for the artwork. That way, too, uh, while I'm clicking around or moving type, I'm not accidentally clicking on this big square and then moving it. So I'm going to, like I said, I just have it locked down over here, just simply click it. And then anything new I bring in, I'm going to bring into this second layer. So file, import, select our football fire. And I'm just going to bring it full size. So in Corel Draw, we brought our image in. So I'm actually, let's, it's a page. Oh, we are to page, okay. Uh, I obviously need to resize it because, I mean, i got to make room for my type that's going to go underneath it here. So first I'm going to scale it in. Now, uh, my finger merely goes to holding the shift key because, again, in Adobe, if you hold the shift key, it keeps it proportionate. Corel, not the case. You just grab the corner here, it'll keep the size proportionate as you're sizing. And then we'll position it. Actually, let's make it center. The quick key to center any object in Corel Draw in, into the middle of the page is P, the letter P. So we hit P to center it. And then we'll just move it up. Let's actually, yeah, I know I'm getting picky. All right. So let's add some fonts. Let's add some type here. So we're going to just say is Jackson High Tigers. So we'll over here to our type tool. Uh, when I'm using a type tool too, I like to have, I'll move out of the object manager, I like to have my uh, text paragraph stuff here because, like I said, we, there's going to be adjusting that needs to be done, things like that. You can find that tab, like I've actually already got it here already ready to go, but where you can find these tabs is you just go to Window, Dockers, and you can find them on here, you know, like the Color Palette Manager, Text, Transform, all these kind of things. So, all right, let's type out our word first. Jackson, okay. All right, let's resize. All right, now it automatically defaults to black, so I'm going to change that. We're going to use a blue. Let's say the school colors are blue and yellow, so we'll change it to blue. Um, you know what, let's put I as well. Now, I'm actually going to add some other elements, too, on this side of the type. So I'm actually going to justify this to the right. So in your, par in your text properties here, you can go down to Paragraph, and there's all your justifying at the top here. You want to go to the right. Um, obviously, I need to resize this. But first things first is I need a better font. This is not going to be good enough. So yeah, something thick. No, that's too thick. Yeah, that'll work. All right. Now, when you're in, when you're in uh, the type phase, we're still our type is type. We haven't converted to curves yet. Um, this is where you'll make some of your adjustments. Like you know, like right here, this distance between Jackson and High is too far apart for right now for our design. Um, actually, I think like the letters are a little too far apart. So what we're going to do is use the kerning tool and want to bring things closer together. All right. So for that. I'm going to head over here, and this right here is your, let's see if the word comes up for it. Yeah, it's your line tool. So you can either click it this way, and you can tap, 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 and tap, tap, tap. doesn't matter. I kind of like to put the line in the middle here, and then if you just kind of like push your mouse up, push your mouse down, get it to where you like it. Yeah. Out there is good. And then over here, you're turning, you can bring your letters closer together. You can stretch them all the way out. We'll bring it in just, just a bit. All right. I'm actually going to stretch the little type out of it. All right. Once you get your type where you need it, and to do the effects that we're going to be doing, um, firstly, we're going to we'll throw a gradient in here. Um, but then when we get to the more effects side of things, you are going to need to change your type to curves. Um, it just handles things better when you're doing effects. It's it, it the, the adjustments are quicker. Some adjustments, especially when we get, start getting up here, we do the bitmap and get in here, it won't do it if it's still a type. So once you get your type where it is, I'm just going to right click and click convert to curves. 
and now it's nodes. You know, it's just like any vector piece of artwork. And now I can, I'm going to resize. Bring those in a bit. Yeah. Okay. So now I want to add tigers in there and, you know, give it a little flair. So we're going to add some uh, other elements in here. So we're going to come and grab our square tool. And actually, let's zoom in. It's a little easier to see. I'm just going to add put a bar here. I don't want it touching me. And scroll down. We don't need an outline on it, so double click on the swatch down here. We'll go to under width, click none, click OK. And let's fill that one with yellow actually. And So I'm just getting picky. I need to. I want to line it up even with that. There we go. All right. Now I'm gonna cl right click on it, copy, click off of it. So then I can go right click, paste, and it paste it right on top. So I'll just now here's to keep it in line. What you're gonna do is you want to click on it and then hold your shift key to keep them in line so you don't lose it. Like so. All right, so now we want to add the word tigers in here. Oh. All right, let's, we're going to do a different font just to play off of it, you know, bigger font, but something a little different just so it stands out differently from uh, the Jackson High, and it will read better that way too if the font is a bit different. Now, let's fill this one with blue. I obviously don't want to stick with Arial, so the impact would be a good one. So let's center that one up. I'll stretch it out a little bit. And, and get it centered in there. There we go. Okay, so now with Type 2, you can do a whole bunch of other things. Uh, there's, there's the envelope tool. You can arc it even when it's clicked on. You know, you, there's, you know, you can warp them, arch them. We're not going to do anything too crazy like that right now, but again, I do need to convert this to curve before we start doing everything else we want to do to it. So we'll convert to curves. Um, let's zoom back out. All right. Now, here's, I want to add actually to play off of the yellow and the lines here, I'm going to put an outline around the Jackson High. So let's double click on this. Before I select a color, you do got to pick the width. It's not going to let you pick any colors. So let's start at four, and we can do the dot here and just select the same yellow. I really wish they'd show me a preview, but that's all right. Oof, that's too thick. So let's try to. That's better. All right, so. Now, when you're des designing for digital printing, you want to be, you, you, you want to take it as far as you can. You don't, you, don't, you don't have to worry about color counts like screen printers. You don't have to worry about limitations like making sure, you know, with the nodes and for vinyl cutting or anything like that. You want to just dress it up as best you can. So one way to do that normally is we can add a gradient in here. Um, you know, you can come in and what you'll do that for that is... You'll double click on your uh, fill swatch, and then up here it gives you a couple options. Go to your gradients. Here we can adjust the angle of the gradient. Now, personally, I don't like that it's treating the Jackson the high. Well, actually, that's not too bad. But this is mainly just for show anyway. So you can adjust the colors. You can add colors in here too. Um, simply click here, and you can put down your swatches. You can adjust how close you want it. As far as like, you know, doing a little blue, a lot of blue. That's annoying me, so let's go back to 90 on the angle. And just, you know, play with it until you get to where you like it. So let's actually cancel because we're going to get into some of the effects you can do in Corel. Uh, actually, 
what we're, last one little touch we're going to do here is we're actually going to adjust the whole thing. I want to give it a little more flair than just dropping it on the bottom here. I want to skew this thing. So to transform these, this stuff, you just need to select all of them. Or like I said before, go to your object manager and collect everything you want. Uh, and then to transform it, I think I actually already have the tab down there, but transform, no, no, not that one, sorry. Just, what did, object, sorry. Object, transformations, and then you got skew, rotation, position, all that kind of stuff. But I actually thought I had it already up. Oh, I must have closed it. Let's go back. I don't like you going to effects. Transformations, skew, there we go. So here we can, uh, usually it's set the default at zero, so you can, no. <laughs> Sorry about that, that drives me crazy. Windows just decides when it wants to update, it doesn't really, it'll just do it. <laughs> so we can, again, you can tap it this way, tap it that way. It's not gonna adjust it automatically on your screen like you saw with everything else. You're gonna need to hit this apply button. So you know, you can sit there and you know pull it up, any direction like this, hit apply, and oh, no, I don't like that. So. Control Z is undo, or you can go to edit, undo. Uh, let's try 20. All right. See what that does. Eh, too much. Actually, we should probably just be able to cut that in half. So Control Z. Bring it back. Let's go 10. Click apply. Yeah, it's not too bad. Increase the size of everything just a smidge. Tuck it up. So now I want to bring it back a little bit. That's a bit better. So, all right, so now let's get into effects so we can dress this stuff up. The main type I'm going to be messing with the effects on initially is Jackson here. As you can see, it is still attached to high. So we can go over to Object Manager, break curve apart, and what it did actually, hold on. Yeah, it's going to mess with that O on us. <laughs> So actually, okay, so real quick, let's go back. Because I, like again, I said, all I want to do is treat the, or Jackson, not the whole thing. So I'm going to trash it real quick and retype it out. So it's two separate words. Fill it with blue. Yeah, now I can see it. Oh my gosh, stop it. <laughs> there. All right, let's change the type back. Let's go to type poster. Line it back up. And we can just copy. Go down. Oh. Right click, click paste. Duplicate it, highlight, hi. And line it back up. All right, so we'll grab both of them real quick. Add that outline, because I do want that outline there, because there's something in the effects you need to pay attention to when it comes up. Grab the yellow. Click OK. There you go. We're back. I'll just add that skew to it real quick. Oh, convert to curves. All right. Now we got them as separate objects. So let's skew it real quick. Skew. <laughs> And since I know the same degree. There we go. All right, we're back. So, Jackson, I'm going to try, what I'd like to do is we're going to show effect. We're going to make this board Jackson kind of look like a football texture, like give it a brown, leathery feel to it. And you can do that in Corel Draw. They have upgraded things. They've added a whole bunch of raster features under bitmaps here. Now, as you can see right now, my type is our curves right now, nodes. That's why everything here is grayed out. I cannot add these effects onto it now. 
Um, you know, it's got 3D effects, you know, embossing, all that stuff. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm actually going to take, I'm going to change the color to brown. So let's click on Jackson here, make it brown. And I want to add a bevel to it, you know, make it look like it's popping off of it a bit there. So what I'm do to do that effect is I'm not going to be doing it in this bitmaps yet. Um, it actually makes it better under effects here with bevel. Uh, mine is checked on because it is down here already. As you can see, it's like a little bevel icon. Um, if it's turned off, you know, it's not there. So you can just go to effects, bevel, and your bevel window show up. Now we got to select something first. So in the bevel window, uh, you can mess with the shadow color, the light color, because we're just going to click apply. Let's you know, well, just reset these things while well, close enough. So you can see, we'll just click apply. It puts a bevel on there. It's like where light source is coming from, you know, the upper left here, and it just looks like it's kind of popping off the page there. I'll zoom in so we can get a closer look. So in your bevel window, like I said, if you don't want this shadow to be dark, you can simply change it to, you know, if you want it to have a red hue to it, click apply, you know, control Z to undo. Uh, we can adjust the intensity of the bevel. You see how the edges got harder? We go this way. Oh, wait. Sorry, I didn't hit the apply thing. It's to just be. That's why I wish it would just change as it did this, but you got to work with it. So, you know, more light is put on it. Let's pull this back, actually. Yeah. Uh, you can change the direction. Like these are degrees. You can change the direction of the light source. Click apply. Yeah, I kind of like that direction. And then altitude is too much. Pull it back. It makes it darker. And you can just play with it. Just, you're not going to hurt anything. Just remember your control Z to undo. Just, just keep going back and forth and playing and playing and playing. So once you get it to where you like, you know, it's like, hey, that's a good level depth. Uh, now we can add a texture to it. So to do that, however, the problem is, is we now need to turn convert this out of curves into a bitmap. So to do that, make sure again it's selected. Then we're going to go to bitmaps, convert to bitmap. It's going to ask you resolution DPI. Default is set at 300. We can change this to RGB. You know, click OK and just it turns it into a bitmap. Now. When you add uh, effects, as you can see now, all these effects have opened up. I mean, you got tons of different things you can do. Page curl, I mean, it may look like it's curled up in the corner. Obviously, I'm not going to use this with the type, but you know, hey, if you're trying to do a photograph and you want to give it a little extra oomph before you send it to your digital printer, you can simply use this. To, it'll, you know, just play with it. Cancel. Different types of arch strokes. This will kind of like. You know, if you want to make it look like charcoal or whatnot, it'll kind of put that texture over it. I don't use those rarely because it's just it's too all over. Um, your other options, you can blur things like create a motion blur. That one's kind of fun if you you know wanted to make it look like the types shooting or one direction color transform. Now texture, I will say this difference. There is a difference when it comes to some of the effects in Corel Draw. You can get away with doing a lot in Corel Draw. But there are extra features in Photo Paint. Um, here, let me show you real quick. I'll just open. We'll just open the football helmet real quick. So I just want to make you guys aware of this because if you're like, hey, I want to try and see if I can get more out of it, even you, you can play a bit more in Photo Paint because in Photo Paint, like as you can see, even under textures, it's got like twice as many different types of textures. So feel free to try it out and play with it in Photo Paint if you feel comfortable enough. You know. Otherwise, if you don't, you're like, nah, it's okay. I just like to stay in curl draw. You can do it here. You just don't have as many options. Like under textures, I get six. So, like I said, we're gonna go for. I want to make this Jacksonville feel like a old leathery football, you know. So, um, but you know, if you want to see what some of the other stuff looks like on it, you can you know, click cobblestone. Give it a second to load. I really didn't do too much, so we can just you know, you play with it. Yeah, I mean, but that's not looking like a football to me. So I'm going to hit cancel, and I'm going to go to texture, elephant skin. 
let's kind of so let's zoom in so you can see it in the texture even better and it's got that crackly oh wait we should have zoomed in before we went to the texture and all right so let's hit cancel let's zoom in so we can see to see like the level of the texture so all right, it's still clicked. Bitmaps, texture, elephant skin. Yeah, so you can see there, it's kind of given in that cracked old age leather look. So you know, we can you can play with it. You want it dark enough so people can see. You know, randomize. It's you know, the higher you go on randomizing, uh, the more it'll put in there. So let's just do so for show. Just put 75. Yeah, and it adjusts it around and switches it around. Actually, I don't like I don't mind it too much. You can change the color of how you want the cracks to be. So you can just click on the swatches palette here and make it red, and it'll. Oop. So let's go back to black though, because I really want that cracked look. And then click OK. Now, one of the other reasons I needed to keep this on its own, uh, Jackson on its own, because I wanted to show you something. Now, when you convert your type to bitmap, remember on with the vector stuff, we can just add the outline. We got the blue. You got the yellow. We're done. We're good. However, it converts everything. As you can see here, it converted the treats, the outline. Oops, that's not. That's it. it treats the outline the same as the brown in here, and you know it bevels it as a whole, and then adds texture over the whole thing. I don't really like that. So you know, I want just the middle part to be have the texture on it to feel like this hard leather. I don't want it to have that yellow outline around behind it. So let's see how far back it'll let me go. Yep. So I just stepped back to where we, before we, uh, I believe it was before we, yeah, yeah, before we bitmapped it. So let's zoom back out. So let's take the outline off. And go to none. None yet. Click OK. And then, but if I still want to keep the outline, what I want to do is go to my object manager. I'll right click on the curve I have selected, which should be, just double checking, yep, should be that. Right click, copy. We can click off of it. See, this is why I put that black square on the background and locked it, because I'd be sitting here all day clicking that black square and it'd drive me crazy. Click paste. We can see it dropped it on the top here, so we're going to bring it behind Jackson. Does it, can you leave the bevel? You cannot leave the bevel. It's up to you. Double click. Go to two. Select our yellow again. Double click. Click that. Click that. Click that. And then we can go back to our curve and convert to bitmap. Click OK. Oh, it did not. Oh, did it already do it? No. Huh. Well, that's never happened. Okay, that's okay. That's never happened. Why it wouldn't? Control object. Don't know why I did it on the other one, but okay, we just duplicated and redid it again. I don't know why it did that with the other one, calling it a control object. Let me go back, go back to our texture, select elephant skin. And add our type, and there you go. That's simple as that. So we got about uh, one thing I will I will say is this is like yeah there are before we get into questions is there are a lot of cool tricks you can find around in Corel. You know you can sit there duplicate the type. You can you know add your gradients. You can do some extents of these effects, but I would recommend to anybody, especially if you do a lot of digital artwork, 
play with Photoshop a little bit. You, you'd be surprised what you can get out of it. I, Dane just taught a class earlier today that I'm sure the video will be up on Stalls TV that you can watch where you can you can go there and you can see what he was showing you. You can see some like layer styles are really a great feature there, especially for digital printers. Um, and just check it out. Just watch the video, check it out, and then if you feel comfortable enough to play with it, play with it. If you want to stay in Corel Draw, you are more than welcome to. And I'm not saying not to. It's just that you know, it's the tool we find is is the easiest tool for using digital. But there you go. Want to guess to now? Just open up. Anybody has any questions about some of the features you've seen or anything like that? Let's see if there's anything. It sounds like there was silence, looks like. Nobody has any questions or anything about what you... Ah. Will this and the earlier webinar be posted to stalls? Oh, well, I lost the question. All right, so will this and the earlier webinar be available on Stalls TV? Yes, it will. Uh, I don't know exact. I don't know exactly when they post it. I mean, but it will absolutely be available on Stalls TV, um, like any of our other webinars we've done. Can the code be used a second time this year? No, it's a one-time code. It ends, and then yeah, it's a one-time code. It expires. I, I can pull that back up for you guys to see it. Where did I put it? Yeah, it expires October 14th. Um, how much of this can be done in Photoshop Elements? Ah, that's a good question. Well, okay, as the name states for right there, that program, Photoshop Elements. It's elements of Photoshop. It's obviously not the full version. I know for a fact you can't mess with channels in Photoshop. Um, I don't know about layer styles off the top of my head. Uh, I want to say you like you can use some of the basics. But you know, I really strong, strongly recommend working with the uh, working with the uh, full version. No, I'm afraid not. It won't. The code won't work if you've used a code already. Yeah. Ah, the code that you're seeing here. This code is to give you a free month on our site. Uh, uh, Great Dane Graphics. Let, so you can download new artwork and you know. You have access to all this great artwork. I can pull the website up too, real quick. You know, we are subscription based, so you just you sign up, you're in, you just download the artwork when you need it, and it's always readily and available. Go to the home page. Oh, then you should be. If you if you didn't use the code before, I mean, I'd actually have to ask the, the web guys on that. I honestly don't know off the top of my head. So, uh, anybody else have any other questions about the artwork or anything you see here? Any questions about uh, what you see in Corel? Oh, on Photoshop, yes, that's correct. They did go. It is. Uh, I think they are now fully just subscription. Yeah, it's like 30, 50 bucks a month. 50, I think, is if you get everything, like Illustrator and Dreamweaver and all that. Any questions, you guys? Got a little bit of time. <laughs> old Photoshop elements. Uh, it should. How, I mean, I don't know how old your Photoshop elements is, but raster artwork, even like our files, yeah, it should still open it, I believe. But, I mean, that's something you might want to try. Oh, what is this one? Uh, not subscription-based. I'm sorry, I'm not following you. How do you take the coloring and texture on the football and use it on the letters? Well, actually, we could go back to that. Actually, that's a good question. Okay. 
So like you were saying, like you basically you want to use like the red and the oranges to tie like the type. Well, that's actually really easy. We actually covered that a little bit earlier, and we can apply the same idea. So you know what we can do is let's take Jackson real quick and bring that back down. Oh, I gotta hide my whole thing here for the meeting. All right, so we'll trash that one. Trash that one because it had issues. And this will go. We'll take out the effects. Should just be able to. No. Um, okay. Well, we'll just select high for this. All right. So what you can do is there's multiple ways. You're like, okay, I want to match the reds, the orange in here. Select high. Go to effects. So we can leave this even, a bitmap even, and this will work too. Um, all right, so you can go to effects, adjust, replace colors. So let's say you want to fill like the brown in Jackson. We'll go here. And we want to fill it with like the orange in here. And that's how you would place, that's how you'd fill it with the same similar colors. Uh, give a pop. I want to see if there's any other questions. Oh, you're talking about okay. How do you take the the texture though? Okay, the texture issue in Photoshop. This is a breeze. You're, you're not really going to be able to unless you want to do some power clipping. You could possibly like uh, to get this kind of rough texture. You could make a selection and power clip it into the type, and uh, and then you could do the effects like bevel it. You know, I mean something like. I'll give it a whirl here, because that is that's a so you can do something like this. So let's copy. Might not look the prettiest, but at least it'll get you where you can get to. So hit paste. We're gonna have it so it covers Jackson. Let's just we're gonna stretch this way out, way up, because I just want the texture. And then let's see, it's been a bit since I power clipped, so edit. Cut. Um, actually, we'll select him and power clip. Geez, power clip. Oh, I think I did the wrong thing. Yeah, I did the wrong thing. I don't need to cut. I'm thinking Illustrator here. I want to have that selected. Go to Objects, Power Clip inside frame. Oh shoot. Try to remember which way it is. Sorry guys. It was a good question. I'm just trying to remember which way it was, if it's reverse or not, because yeah, it's not gonna let me do it. So yeah, you're just gonna want to power clip it in there. I apologize. We're kind of running low on time. I want to make sure I answer everybody's. But what you do to get that texture is this is at least how I would do it. Is I would just power clip it into that type. I mean, you just have to select the frame. I sorry, I'm struggling on remember which way to have to select this or select that. But we can do that another time. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Uh, the, as far as this, we, I'm not going to be able to send you the web, this webinar, but it will be available on stallstv.com, so you can come back to it whenever you'd like. Um, like again, I said, I don't know when it's going to be put up there, though. As far as our subscription, uh, no, we do not have it at this time where you can buy an individual piece. Uh, it is subscription-based only now. Um, there has been some talk, but as far as right now, it is subscription-based only. Well, guys, uh, if anybody's got any other questions, we got two seconds here. Otherwise, we can wrap this up, and I appreciate your time. Okay, Joe, thanks very much for the presentation. We are going to uh, take back control of the screen, and we will become our presenter, and you'll be wrapped up then. Thanks very much. Yep. Thank you very much.